peace for Ukraine or Ukraine now. Russia, just go home. My God, sometimes you're blindfolded, you know that? So believe me, if you think you're human and you're ignorant and all that, you are blindfolded also. One day it will hit you, okay? Maybe not the way it hit me, but it will hit you in the way that it hit me before that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We started somewhere. We started riding the bicycle, we skin our knees and our elbows, but then suddenly you just ride it and it goes smoothly from then on. You just balance it and it's done. Yeah, at that point, at that point, then you will know that you definitely are not human and not ignorant and not the way you think you are. At that time, your ego will drop, drop dead, <laughs> say you're not, and then you will really know your real self, at least a great part of your real self, huh? okay? Well, why are we going so far ahead of our time? Mm. At that time, truly, I couldn't care less what I wear or not wear. You know what I mean? Everything just dropped. Everything's just gone. Yeah. And now I'm back here again wearing green, <laughs> throwing some makeup on. Yeah. It's okay. Why not? <laughs> it's just uh, at that point I thought I'm done, you know. No one would ever know where I live anymore or where I am anymore. That's, that's the feeling of it, that I'll be gone forever, gone into, you know, obscurity. Not necessarily to the uh, spiritual world, but gone out of sight, you know. That is the only thing I could think of. <laughs> yeah. But how come I came back? I don't know also. Huh? We drag you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, you did not succeed, actually. I mean, you dragged me physically back to you, but I haven't gone down at all. I might have gone down maybe one level or two, back and forth, you know? But I haven't gone back completely like before, you know? I haven't gone back to the fifth, for example, yeah? No. <laughs> but it's nice like that. Because I was thinking, uh, that's it, I have to go, you know? It was impossible at that time to think of coming back to see you uh, talk nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, I can manage it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a miracle, really. Hmm? Like a resurrection. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to this book. So you are even lucky. You are lucky, huh? Yes. I don't know. Okay, just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, still, uh, I feel very far from you, you know, but now and again I glimpse a little bit back, you know, as before, with a telescope perhaps, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that I can feel what you feel, you know, otherwise I will not feel anything and it's not good for you, is it? Huh? Okay. But, you know, I'm still surprised. I'm still surprised. Because at that point, you don't have any, you've just gone beyond all emotion. You do not understand humans or animal people or anything. Yeah. And I'm very surprised that I still can come back. The feeling can come back. I thought, that's it, everything's gone. Yeah. Just leaves you. Everything leaves you completely. You just stand there completely. Nude, if you will, you know, naked. <laughs> you don't have anything at all. <laughs> and you just feel shy, you know, you just want to cover yourself, that's it. Because the revelation is too, is too strong. It's too, it's completely uh, without anything attached to it. Completely just right there, like a crystal ball. There's no cover, no stain. No blemish, nothing at all. And it was too powerful, you know? Yeah. And afterward I survived, but I thought, 
I became so shy. So shy, yeah. I'm surprised that I can come back, eat stuff and talk to you. Yeah, and read books. <laughs> yeah. So uh, somehow I managed. I, I learned to manage to balance the situation. So it is possible after all. I never thought it was possible. You know, during all my reincarnations on all the physical planets, it had not happened, okay? It's the first time. Maybe I haven't chosen to, yes? In Malaga, uh, we saw you, and I just have the feeling you're almost all gone, just like empty clothes there. And maybe maybe one percent is clinging only there, yeah. just like that, and uh -huh. everything is up. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, perhaps it's like that, yeah. I feel almost like that every day. What surprise, you know, all the dog people and the pets, they keep me down here. <laughs> they keep me in a reality check, you know. It's okay too, maybe because of them, yeah, that I have to be connected still. And it's good that way. Okay. All right. I told you, even though I'm not that shy anymore, but I, I couldn't go and tell everybody like that. Yeah? yeah? It's not as shy as before, but still it's not a thing to tell people, no? I'm still talking around it. I even don't <laughs> go to the point. <laughs> I can't with you even. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Do you see I say anything? I'm just talking around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Cutting around the edge only, no? I can't even get it out there. I I still cannot get to that point to tell you bluntly what is what. I can't do it. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I ask myself. <laughs> It's just talk around, beating around the bush, huh? <laughs> just like like a man who wants to propose, but says, "Oh, <laughs> you are the sunshine of my life. <laughs> you are the roses in my garden, and all that, no?" But at one point, he doesn't say it, you know. <laughs> Proposing a weather forecast. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. You okay, love? Eh? Yes. What's wrong? Crying. <laughs> well, why are you crying? Okay. Look, I even painted my fingernails yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Cool, huh? <laughs> right. Where were we? Okay. Mm. Okay. So, that was uh, about the prophets, yeah? who foretold some events, and then they'd always happen, so the people respected them because of that. But we don't do that also. We, we don't tell often such things, huh? Right? We, among us. Maybe they could do that. And, you know, I said to some small group, uh, a few people, and then that few people spread out maybe. I don't think these are prophets, so-called prophets, also go out in the street and say, look here, tomorrow is going to rain. You know, something like that. <laughs> that belongs to the BBC Weather Forecast Company. <laughs> Let them earn some living, no? <laughs> Let them do their job. Good job, no? The good job that they're doing. Why the prophets have to do that? I guess in the old times they didn't have TV. <laughs> so it's also good to warn people out of danger, huh? And maybe that's why they have to do it. Okay, now. All right. Now we continue uh, lower down. The Essenes consider that everybody who does not marry hereby contracts the propagation and destination of men, humankind, womankind, <laughs> as men <laughs> would soon cease to exist otherwise. If men doesn't exist, then women exist, okay too, no? <laughs> they say if we don't propagate, you know, like we don't marry and have children, then men cease to exist. It's all it talks about men, so we women, we don't care, huh? <laughs> men. They mean if everybody doesn't marry, then we have no more world, you know, no more humankind. I don't know if that's important or not. Is it important? No. Maybe, yeah? In that sense, perhaps, yeah. You have to know that the order of the Essenes probably have been like a lineage, you know? coming down through generations, yeah? Uh, like the Buddhist tradition and all that, no? It might not be at that time, 
that have a lot of uh, high level enlightened masters. Yeah, it might not be, but they still keep the virtues of it. Yeah, just like the Buddhists, you know, they keep the five precepts. Yeah, it doesn't mean that they are very highly enlightened. Or the people who are vegetarian. Yeah. Because they belong to some vegetarian club or something, or lineage, or some teaching, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have studied with a uh, very enlightened master, eh? or then they might not have produced all that enlightened master. There might be some, but it doesn't always mean. So they might interpret something according to their understanding of their spiritual level at that time. Yeah. Okay. So hence, perhaps that's why they say everybody who doesn't marry. Uh, we were not uh, propagate for the population of the world, which is not good. That's what I mean. Okay, I don't mind. I told you, I don't mind. You marry my children a lot. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just meditate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but ere they married, they put the one they had chosen as their wife on a term of trial for three years. Oh oh, oh oh, three years. After three years, he gets fed up. There he goes to somebody else. Oh, what, what a clever way! Because people say three year each, you know, and seven year each. <laughs> so after three years, maybe you don't want to stay with that partner anymore. But why? Why, why is that? This is the thing I don't agree because it's all about men here. Men choose a wife and they try her for three years. Ah, <laughs> some people who did not. Get a very high enlightened level and still have a little sound of sexist here. We cut that part out. <laughs> no, never mind. We just keep it. Doesn't matter. People have to understand. You know, you have to understand. Yeah, the teachings sometimes have flaws. That's a problem. Okay. After this threefold trial and cleansing. If the woman was found to be chaste and faithful and capable of bearing children, they marry her. <laughs> wow, like a business. Uh oh, uh oh. So I think we don't want to belong to this. Uh, this policy only we don't like, huh? They never had sexual intercourse with their wife in her pregnancy. Well, that's okay. Thereby to show they had not married from lust, but to fulfill the command of Jehovah, be fruitful, increase, and fill the earth. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have to ask Jehovah about that. <laughs> it's okay. the The idea of marriage for you know spiritual partnership is okay. Yeah. Uh, not for lust, yeah? that's okay, that's laudable. But uh, to think of a woman as like a bearing children object, that I don't agree with. Yeah, They had forgotten the woman's soul, which is equal to men's. Yeah, Maybe they haven't elaborated very well, maybe it's just one of the traditions in the country and they incorporated it into this uh, way of life. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. When the woman bathes or wash themselves, they are clothed in a linen garb, meaning not completely naked in, in the river. They didn't have bathrooms before, so they just bathed themselves in the lake or river, so of course they have to clothe themselves in a kind of gap, you know, so you can wash yourself inside but nobody sees you. Eh? It's like a mobile bathhouse. Eh? <laughs> That's just very cool. We can do it here. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> They can wear a, a plastic cap and then go outside in the rain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the water will run inside and you clean inside, that, like a tent, you know? <laughs> like a personal bathing tent. Okay. Now, the men, similarly, when they bath, wear an apron or belt around the waist. Okay, that's okay. It's no big deal. Hmm. In whatever they do, they exercise great order and chastity. Yeah, that's supposed to be, you know, like for dignity, né? to protect your uh, dignity as well as somebody else who is watching. Huh? If anybody is watching, they should not anyway. Huh? But probably because they bath together, you know, in the same lake or something, or the same bathhouse, so they have to exercise that, and it's okay. 
So rightly do they deserve to be called an example for the life of other people. Oh, that's correct. Ai có biết lòng ai hẹp chẳng nên lời hãy nhìn trong đời mắt bao sóng tình lên khơi tình vui hạ 